Amen. It's another great afternoon in the presence of God, experiencing His love, worshiping, spending time with Him, knowing Him a little bit more, getting out of our comfort zone, getting out of who we are and experiencing who He is. That's the wonder of worship. That's the wonder of being in God's presence. That's the wonder of our life in Christ Jesus. Today we're going to continue on in our series. Last week we began a series looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 to 7. And I'm going to read it right now just as a reminder. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 7. Love suffers long. In some translations it says love is patient. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, it thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. That's 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 7. Last week we talked briefly just a little bit about what the meaning of God's love is. And we talked about the different types of love. We talked about brotherly love. We talked about uh, fondness love, even romantic love. But God's love is the commitment type of love, the agape love. Agape would be the Greek word. It's a, it's a committed love that is not based on, like we, like we said when we're praying, it's not based on who the person is, but it's based on the person who's loving that person. It says, I am committed to you. I am committed to you through thick and thin, good and bad, hard times, easy times. My commitment is to you. And that's that agape love, but it's the, that's the kind of love that God has for us. But it doesn't just stop there. This is the kind of love that God wants us to have for others as well. And this is the love that it talks about in 1 Corinthians 13. Every time it talks about love is, love is, love is, love is, that love word is agape. Agape love. Committed love is patient. Committed love is kind. And it goes through that whole passage talking about agape love. What we're going to do in this series is we're going to look at each one of those points. Love is patient. Love is kind. And we're going to look at them, and we're going to look at them through the Bible, but we're also going to look at them how God is, for example, today, we're talking about patience. So we could look at it and say how God is patient with us. Next week, we'll talk about kindness, how God is kind to us, and what that kindness means, what it really means, and some examples in the Bible that help us to understand God's love towards us in a new way. So I hope, and I I, I anticipate, and I believe that you're going to receive a new revelation of God's love. As we look at each one of these things, I believe that you're going to receive a new revelation of God's love towards you. And what God thinks about you and what God's plan is for you personally. But then on the other side, how you can show that love that we receive from God, how we can show that love to others as well and have that heart of love in everything that we do. So today we're going to look at the first one. Love is patient. Okay, love is patient. Now, the meaning of the word... Okay, if we look up the meaning of the word, there's some interesting descriptions of this word. Okay, so when I look up the meaning of the word, we look it up in Strong's, what it means. It means to be long-spirited. Long-spirited. And I, when I read that, I'm like, I thought that was a kind of an interesting way of thinking about it. What does it mean to be long-spirited? What does it mean when we have a long spirit? Other words, it means to bear or to to carry something. 
is to carry something for a long time. Or there's also a, a, an aspect of that that means to suffer long. Is patient, patient meaning to suffer a long time. Long suffering is another, another word that they use to describe this word patience. To patiently endure. Another description of this word patient would be to not lose heart. To not lose heart. An example of this would be in Galatians 6 verse 9. It says, let us not be weary in doing well, for in due season we will reap if we do not, some translations say if we do not faint, but this, uh, certain translations also say if we do not lose heart. That means not getting discouraged, holding on to faith. Long-spirited means that you're in this for the long haul. You're in this for the long game. You're not just thinking about one part. You're not just thinking about today, but you're in this for the long game. You're thinking about the end from right now. Long-spirited, a person who is long-spirited is not just looking at what we have in front of us, but it's looking at the future and saying, even though I'm going through this right now, there's something ahead of me that's going to make all of this worthwhile. Things are going to change in my future. This is not going to stay the same. This is not going to define me. This is not my life. But there's something more in the future. And that's what that long spirit it is. You know, it's a, it's a knowing that the future is better than what we're facing right now. And so if someone who knows that the future is better can go through what they're facing today with a heart of hope, with a heart of anticipation, with a heart of patience. And that's what this meaning, that's what this word means. Love is patient. Love suffers long. Love, love is long-spirited. A long-spirited person, they have a future focus. They have a future focus. Kind of like an athlete who they're doing something and they're, they're striving and maybe their body is giving up on themselves, but they have a goal in mind. They have the end goal in mind. They've seen, they've know, they know where the ending is. And they say, I'm just going to keep going through this pain to get to that finish line. To get to that finish line. And then when the finish line happens, when I get through that finish line, then there's the joy, then there's the completeness, then there's the satisfaction of making it through the pain to get to that finish line. God has patience with us. God has patience with us. God is long-spirited with us. And we don't have to look at very many different stories in the Bible to see that God really is patient with us. As we were worshiping, I thought about the story of the, of the, the prodigal son, the story of the prodigal son, the faithful father. The faithful father was long-spirited. He was patient. He knew his son was out there, and it hurt his heart. It, just, it, it, it broke his heart to know that his son was out there living and, and wasting the inheritance, wasting the life, but he was patient. And every day he would go out and look down the road patiently, hoping, longing, looking, until his son came back and he went running down the road said, I knew my boy was coming back. I'm going to go meet him. I'm going to greet him. I'm going to welcome him in back to my house, back to the house of the Father. Another story that we could look at in the Bible is kind of a little bit of an obscure one. It's in Genesis chapter 5. If you look at Genesis chapter 5, it's the genealogy of the first 10, uh, first 10 people first 10 generations after Adam. So we have Adam, and then his son, then his son, then his son, then his son. Keeps going down all the way through until Moses. Or sorry, Noah. 
The seventh man in that list was a man named Enoch. And it says that Enoch had a, was 65, and when he was 65, he had a son. His son's name was Methuselah. And then after Methuselah was born, it says that Enoch walked with God for 300 years. And after those 300 years, he was no more. He never died. He went straight to heaven. He ascended into heaven with God. God took him into heaven. Boom. No death. I want to be like Enoch. I'm not 65 yet, but, but I want to walk with God. I want to walk with God. I don't want to die. But I would love that. Wouldn't that be awesome? You walk with God, boom, you get to, get to go straight to heaven. But Methuselah, Methuselah was Enoch's son. And many people in the Bible, or many people who study the Bible, they say that Enoch was also a prophet. If you walk with God for 300 years, you're going to know something about God and God's plan. But in the naming of Methuselah, Enoch was prophesying about something that was to come. The name of the, the, the meaning of the name Methuselah is there's two meanings to that name. One is the day of the dart, and the, and the second meaning of the name is the end shall come. So the day of the dart and the end shall come. That was the, that's the meaning of the name Methuselah. So then we see Enoch, 65 years, 300 years walked with God. But then after Methuselah, or sorry, after Enoch ascended into heaven, Methuselah continued living on the earth. And the prophecy of Methuselah's life was that when he died, the end would come. And if you look at what happened in Methuselah's life, and you line up all, of ge all the genealogies, you can see that in the same year that Methuselah died was the flood when God released judgment onto the earth. And so that very same year, that very same year, the flood came, judged the earth. And so Enoch prophesied about that, that, that Methuselah's life was going to be a prophecy about that flood, that judgment that was coming. His name, the end is near. The end, the end shall come, sorry. But the other key thing about Methuselah's life is that he was the longest living man recorded in the Bible. Even longer than Adam. He lived nine, Methuselah lived 969 years. God was patient. God was patient. He prophesied that the end would come. But then for almost a thousand years, God waited. Almost a thousand years was waiting for people to turn to him. Waiting for people to turn their hearts to him. Noah's life was a testimony. He started building that ark even before there was any rain. And people would probably come up to him and say, Noah, what are you making? What are you, what are you doing here? He said, I'm making a boat. Oh, there's no water around. There's no rivers or lakes. This is a huge boat. Yeah, he said, but the rain's coming. The rain's coming. And they said, so his life was a, a, a total evangelistic tool to tell people to turn back to God, to turn back to God. And so he prophesied. And he, he knew that it, this was coming. He was obeying God. But God was being patient. We see God's patience in the life of Methuselah. A couple more verses that talk about God's patience. John 13, verses 3 to 4. Listen to this word. This was, this was one of my favorite verses of the of the of the night that Jesus was betrayed by Judas and sent to the cross. This is what happened. Jesus met with his disciples. They ate together. They ate the Last Supper together. But then this is, this, listen to this, what happened. In John chapter 13, verses 3 to 4, it says, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God, and was going back to God. Rose from supper, 
laid aside his outer garments and taking a towel, tied it around his waist and washed the disciples' feet. So there's three things there. Knowing that he came from God, knowing that he was going back to God, and knowing the authority that God had given him. And in the knowledge of those three things, in the spirit of those three things, Jesus says, all right, I'm going to take on the robe of a servant, and I'm going to serve these disciples. I'm going to do the lowliest of actions towards them to let them know that I am for them, I am with them, and I believe in them. Jesus knew that the end was coming. He knew that Judas was going to go out and betray him. But he also knew what was ahead. He knew that he was going back to the Father. He knew that there was something greater ahead of him than what he was going to face that same day. He was long-spirited. He was in this for the end game. He was not just thinking about today. Not just thinking about the difficulties and the pain of today, but he said, no, there's something more. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go all through this, but I'm going to go through it, and I'm going to see my father. I'm going back to my father. And so he was able to go through those things. He had that patience, and he had that love, and he served somebody who he knew was going to betray him. He washed Judas' feet, too. And he knew that later on, Judas that very night was going to go out and was going to betray him. But he did it anyways because he had that love that was patient. Love that, was, that had that long spirit. Hebrews 12 verse 2 says, Let us look to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus said, this cross is before me, but there's something past the cross. The joy that was set before him. What is that joy? That joy is not only him being reunited with the Father, but leading us into that joy, leading us into that everlasting life with him. And every person that comes through the gates of heaven, Jesus welcomes with joy. That's the joy that was set before him. Just think about it. Every person who goes through the gates of heaven meets with Jesus because of what Jesus did, because of his patience with the cross. Jesus welcomes them in, and that's his joy. We can go through the gates of heaven and enter into that joy, enter into that life, enter into that peace, because he was patient, because he went through the tough stuff, because there was more. There was something on the other side. He was long-spirited. What does it mean for us to have patience or to suffer long on a daily basis? What does that mean for us? We, we see in the Bible how God has patience and Jesus has that long-spirited heart and spirit. But what about for us? What does that look like for us? I think one of the key things in us being patient and in us having that long-spirited faith future focus is to not just not focus on today, but think about life with the end in mind. Sometimes we get so caught up with where we are today. And the, and the today, today is important because today is always filled with choices and decisions, but today is not the end. There's more past today. If we only focus on today, then we end up focusing and we end up living life with a pass or fail mindset. 
And I think this is what the patience wants us to cut out of our lives. Life is not a pass or fail. I got to do perfectly or else God's going to cast me out. I have to perform right or that's it, I'm a failure. God doesn't think about it. God doesn't think about our life like that and we shouldn't either. Our life is a journey. Our Christian life is a journey. When Jesus said, met with his disciples, he said to them, come and follow me. He didn't say, come and be perfect. Come and do everything that I tell you to do. No, the Pharisees took care of all that. That's how the Pharisees lived. The Pharisees were, you have to do this, 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 and this. If you don't, we'll cut you off. Forget about it. Performance, pass or fail, perfection. That's what, that's what that mindset looks like. But God doesn't want us to live like that. God doesn't want us just to live in the today. He wants us to have that faith focus that says, maybe I failed today, but God has a bigger plan for me. God is with me. God is walking with me. He's not finished with me yet. He doesn't cast me aside. He doesn't forget about me. He doesn't say, all right, you, you messed up too many times. Forget about it. I'll work, go work with somebody else. No, his love is patient towards us. He is committed to you. Maybe you've messed up too many times. Maybe you've messed up too many times for your family. Maybe you've messed up too many times for your friends. Maybe you've messed up too many times for yourself, but you've never messed up too many times for God. He is patient with you. He's got the end in mind. And the end is his son, Jesus. The end is him welcoming you into the gates of heaven. Come on in. Come on in. Walk with him. The Christian life is not about one prayer where we say, God, come into my heart. And then that's it for the rest of your life. No. The, 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 the minute that you pray and commit your life to God, you're committing to a journey. You're committing to a journey. And that journey is a day-by-day -day walk. Like his disciples. Jesus said, come follow me. They didn't have to have all the answers. They just had to walk with Jesus. They just had to see where Jesus is going. Jesus said, come follow me. All right, yeah, I'll follow. I'll go with you. I'll walk with you. That's all they had to do. And that's what God wants us to do too. You don't have to be a perfect Christian. Okay? You don't have to be a perfect Christian. There are no perfect Christians. I saw somebody at a church once. They had a, a sign on their church. They said, perfect people are not allowed. If you're perfect, you can't come into church. Because if you're perfect, then you're proud. And we know that you're lying if you say you're perfect because everybody's not perfect, right? And there's nobody who's perfect. Perfect people not allowed. God takes the broken. He takes the ones who stumble and fall. And he says, come, follow me. He is patient. He's long-suffering. He has a, a long, he's long-spirited. And that's how he is towards us. We can't have a, a mindset where everything is pass and fail. Sometimes we, we fail, we fall down, and sometimes the condemnation just beats us up too much where we think, oh, that's it. I'm done. I've, done, I've, I've messed up too many times. But God doesn't think that way. He thinks of you in love and in patience. Focus on the journey. God's desire is that you would walk with him in a journey and in a relationship with him. Not a relationship based on do's and do nots. Not a relationship based on perfection and performance. Not a relationship based on pass and fail.
but a relationship based on his love. That's what God has for you. That's what God has for you. Allow God to work inside of you. You don't have to be perfect. There's only one man who is perfect, and that's Jesus. And he went to the cross for you because we know you're not perfect. But God did ask you, come, follow me. Walk daily with me. Walk in relationship with me. Walk in love with me. That's God's patience towards you. A patient heart is, a, is, is future focused, but it's also faith focused. It's a foc it's a focus in it's it's a it's a focus towards the future, knowing in faith what the future holds. And it's interesting in that verse, in Hebrews 12 verse 2, it says that Jesus is the author, and the finisher of our faith. So, in faith he went to the cross knowing that what he accomplished was going to have great results for the future. But he also established our faith at that moment too. He's the author. The author is the one who writes the book. Jesus wrote the book on faith. He established faith. And he established your faith. So Jesus wants you to live a life of love and patience and of a future focus towards him. How can we be long-suffering towards God? Know that he has the end in mind. Always know that God has the end in mind. God knows what the end is. It's hard for us to know when we're in the garbage of the day and the difficulties of today. It's hard for us to see even till tomorrow. God has the end in mind and we have to have faith towards him and so our love towards God says God I will face this patiently because I know that you are my God and that you have my future in your hands so I can be patient today it's difficult yes there's no denying it. Jesus didn't say the cross was easy. No, he didn't say that. But there was a joy that was past the cross. God doesn't say, oh yeah, today is easy for you. No, he doesn't say that. He says, yeah, I know it's hard. But there's something else on the other side. Be long spirited. And that's how we can show patience towards God. It's a faith patience. It's a faith that says, yep, I know God's got me. And Jesus even use this example, use the future focus to, to have, to help his disciples focus. He says, John 14 verses 1 to 2, he says, don't let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe in me. In my father's house are many rooms. I go to prepare a place for you. He knew that when he left, it was going to be hard for the disciples. He knew that some of the disciples were going to be martyrs. He knew that the disciples were going to face persecution, but he said, remember this, that I'm going ahead of you and I'm going to prepare a place for you. It's a good place. It's a place that's past the pain and it's in the future and it's a good place, a place where I welcome you in. And so God asks us, he has patience towards us, but he asks us to have patience towards him. And that's how we can show our love to him. Sometimes we feel like we're suffering. God doesn't deny our suffering. He doesn't say, oh yeah, just shake it off. No, he says, yeah, it's, it's tough. But there's something more. There's something past that. Jesus is reminding his disciples to keep the end in mind. I go to prepare a place for you. So when all this is said and done, there will be a place for us. Not 
not prepared by humans, but prepared by the Savior of the world. Boy, I can't wait to get there. It's a good place. How can we be long-suffering and patient towards others? Don't encourage perfection. Don't encourage a performance mindset. Sometimes this is so easy to do. Sometimes it's so easy that when someone does wrong to us, sometimes it's easy to say, oh yeah, he failed, you failed. We expect retribution, we expect uh, punishment. God, punish them. No, God wants us to show love to people in patience. Maybe that person, that person is on a journey as well. Just like you are, you're on a journey that person is also on a journey. We don't know where they are in their heart with God. But let's be patient. Let's let God continue to work in them. Ask them questions. Maybe, maybe you're close to them. Maybe you're not close to them. If you're not close to them, then we just have to trust God. Trust that God is working within them. If we are close to them and we do have a good relationship with them, Ask them, so what's this about? What's God doing in your life? How's your relationship with God? How are you growing in the Lord? Ask them those relationship questions. Ask them questions about their faith. What is past this? What do you hope for? What's the future going to bring? And we can be able to gauge kind of how their heart is and encourage them in following Jesus just like we did. Maybe we share some of our own failings and some of our own pain that we've walked through. But show patience to people. Be patient with them. Always look at things with the long view. Philippians 1 verse 6 says, He who began a good work will complete it. Jesus began somebody in you. Or sorry, Jesus began a good work in you. Jesus began a good work in him, in her, in that person, in that person who failed, in that person who sinned. Jesus began something in them. Trust him because he said he's going to work it out. He said he's going to complete it. So let him do the work in that person. Be an encouragement. Say, okay, come on. I know you failed. It's hard for me, but I know you failed Let's get up. Let's continue following Jesus. He's got good stuff in store for us. He's got good things in the future for you and for me. Come on, let's continue. Show love to people. Show hope. It'll transform people's lives because everybody in the world gets beat down when they fail. Gets beat down from others. Beats down, beat down from the enemy. Beat down by themselves but let's show love, that patience, that forward thinking, that hope that we have in God. Take a step back, take a breath, be patient and enjoy the journey. God's got us all on a journey and the journey is an adventure. It's not our walk with Jesus isn't always just a, you know, a smooth plane ride. There's bumps in the road. There's adventure. Adventure means unpredictability, though. Adventure means something's going to happen that we don't know about. Difficult times, hard times. But when we get to the end, we can look back and say, wow, look what God brought us through. Look what God brought us through. And let's show that love that we receive from God. Show that love back to him, but show that love to others as well. One more verse I want to read at the end here as we close. This is a verse in Luke chapter 18, verse 7. And it's the story, the illustration of a woman who kept knocking and kept wanting justice in her life. There was, some, there was an injustice in her and she kept knocking at the judge's door. And in Luke 18, verse 7, I'm not going to read the whole 
illustration, but I just want to read this one part of it. It says, And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? So I, I just want to focus on that one part. As he bears long with them. When you are going through suffering, when you are needing patience in your life, God himself is bearing long with you. He is being patient and he is supporting you as you're going through that difficult time. So even in the today, as it's a challenge to focus on the future, know that in the today, God is with you as well. God is with you here. God is with you in the suffering and the difficulty. As we're trying to bear long, as we're trying to stay up underneath the weight of today, by looking forward, God is there with us, supporting us, carrying that weight along with you. So you are not by yourself as you are being patient. God himself is with you. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for your word. God, we thank you for your faithfulness to us. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your love towards us. That even while we were still sinners, you had the end in mind and Christ died for us. And God, I pray for each one of us as well that we would grow. Number one, we would grow in the understanding of your love and of your patience towards us. You don't strike us down. You don't kick us out. You don't forget about us. You're faithful. And God, I pray that the knowledge of that and that the truth of that would be like a seed that goes into our hearts and starts to grow and it can bear fruit of patience, the fruit of patience towards you and towards the things that we're facing on a daily basis, but also towards others, people who fail us, people who forget about us. We can be patient towards them and show love towards them. Help us to grow, God. Help us to be more like you. God, your love is so, so wonderful, so amazing, so unbelievable, so overwhelming. But God, it is real and it is true and we open up our hearts to it because we want to receive all that you have for us. I want it all, God. I want it all. God, I just pray for everyone who's watching today, and I just pray that your love would live in them. That they would live today with patience, with the future focus in mind. And they would live with hope, knowing who has the future. You have the future in, in your hands. Thank you for your faithful love, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless all you guys. Thank you guys for joining with us, coming into the presence of God, learning from his word, the wonderful things he has for us. I just want to encourage you, if you have any prayer requests, we're always available on Facebook. Our numbers, our, our phone numbers are there on the screen to encourage, to we want to get connected with you. Please reach out to us because it's hard for us to know. We, but we have pastors there available. It's hard to know who's, who needs prayer requests. We can't, as we're separated, we can't exactly have an altar call where you come up and get prayer. But we want to pray with you if you need it. We want to know you. If you need healing, if you need believing for a miracle, relationship things, marriage, anything at all, we want to pray with you. So please be in contact with us. Also, please don't forget about small groups. Small groups in this time are so important. 
so important to stay connected in relationship that we can continue following the Lord together. And also all the information for tithes and offerings, that's all available online as well. We thank you. Thank you for being a part of New Life Fellowship. Thank you for watching today. Thank you for joining us as we enter into the presence of God together and bring glory and honor to him. Have an awesome week. God bless you guys. We'll see you next week.